till we still winning. Magic card or we extending. Dark law, he still contending. Sunrise, your life's ending. Yugi peoples and fellow members of My Hero Academia, welcome to the commentary where I talk about my plays in a live duel so this right here is game three of my play testing match against ed evan robinson's live twins this is the game where i actually fixed my deck and added back in the honest neos and with that you can also see that i drew it in my open hand which is one of the reasons why i started cutting it from my decks in the first place but I really needed another target for Fusion Destiny when I'd used or sent my Mali with my Vions effect. So that's pretty much kind of basically what he's there for. My opening hand was Ogre, Nib, Foolish, Mass Change, and Honest Neos. So I have the two hand traps like I wanted to open up with. Ghost Ogre, I don't feel like it's all that great against Live Twins. But Nib, I always feel like it's enough to get the job done against him. And I also have a starter. I don't have a counter card like, um, or an extender like cross out or caught by. But since I have the mass change, I feel like it'll kind of be okay. So right here, you know, like I said, I don't feel like Ghost Oker is pretty effective, especially not against like these two and stuff, because they always seem to have the extender if you get rid of one of them off the board. So I'm going to save the Ogre for something else and i just want to make sure that i can nib him at the end of his combo now if he was playing something like the adventure package then i would still have you know nib ogre to and, and get yes sasha and you all right so he starts doing live twin things and he's thinking of his uh route that he wants to take yeah. right here and like i said at the end i'm just gonna nibble him and i feel like i'll be all right after that now one thing i gotta remember when i play against live twins from now on is that i probably should nib them before they go into the trouble sunny since he has that effect in the graveyard i might as well just not even let them reach that point since they summon five times before he even hits the board and he didn't go into dagda so i'm thinking to myself ah he probably hard drew the scythe which is all good. So, yeah. Right there, I nib him. There's a token. Wondering if he has the the spell card that lets them extend. And he doesn't. But he has Monster Reborn again. Open Monster Reborn twice. And he brings Trouble Sunny back out. I drew Mally for turn. And it was a really bad draw. Pretty bad hand. Oh, Foolish. To see if he's got ash or anything like that before I kind of decide what I really want to do. And of course he has the ash. And like I said, I didn't draw a cross out or anything this time. So I'm trying to decide, since I do have Honest Neos, if it's better for me to just go ahead and bring out um bring out Dark Law. That way when he does do the rest of his live twin stuff, they get banished instead of going to the graveyard. But in order to do that, of course, I have to tribute my nib. And I'm asking if Trouble Sunny is like the other ones where he has to do it in the main phase. That way I can kind of plan out which option is better. And in the end, I decided since I do have mass change and um, if things don't go right, then at least I can banish Mally to special summon uh, another one back out to the board. So I'll go ahead and tribute the nib, bring out Mally Bane. And I think one of the things he didn't realize when I did this is that if I do mass change, then Scythe is going to get banished. And now Mally Boy hits the field. He's going to activate Trouble Sunny's effect. I do believe that I went ahead and said Battle Phase. I declare an attack into the Trouble Sunny. And I'm not going to lie. I do that a lot with a small monster into bigger monsters. Because I know a lot of people think inside their head automatically is he must have Honest Neos. 
And sometimes I do it when I don't even have honest Neos in order to get them to do what it is I want them to do, which in this case, it would have been fine, even if he had let the attack go through, because I just would have, I did have the honest Neos, even though I didn't search for it. And now he goes trouble sunny effect and he activates his two live twin monsters effects. And the best thing about this is, like I said, Scythe is going to get banished when I chain mass change. And also the draw from the pink one will get me a banish by Dark Law also. So he's going to target his back row. And now I know that it is Scythe. And the only bad thing about that being is that I know now that at the end of the turn, he's still going to have that token on board. So, of course, I chain the mass change. I go into Dark Law. I would have really preferred to have gone into Anki. But if I go into Anki, then I get Scythe locked in. You know, there's nothing I can do. So he just put Scythe. Forget that it gets banished. He's got Ghost Ogre. But you can't Ghost Ogre Dark Law because cars cannot go to the graveyard. That's one of the better things about this format is that, like, like if you can get Dark Law out there kind of early... You can keep your increase or your cross crusader from getting ghost ogred because that happens to him a lot. So I make sure that I want the one that can destroy stuff to get to get banished. That way he can't be doing little things like that. And at the end of main, he's gonna go ahead and activate the pink's effect to special summon another blue one. And I'm trying to decide if I want to go ahead and activate Mally's effect, which I probably should have. I should have just went ahead right here and banished Mally to special summon the other one out and went into Verte because I'm not locked into anything and brought out DPE. And I could have popped, you know, both of the I could have started popping the live twin monsters. So right here, he just goes into the battle phase and tries to attack over dark law with the 3300 attack nib token but of course like a good hero player i opened up the honest neos and he wasn't able to attack over it and with only the pink one in the board the trouble sunny can't activate its effect because he can't send it to the graveyard so Dark Law pretty much brings the end to this match right here because he's going to concede, realizing that he, even if he does link, you know, they all end up getting banished and he doesn't have one in the graveyard to bring back out to get back into Trouble Sunny. So, yeah, that'll be the end of game one. And he shows me the Valor, the Ogre. And yep, they're just dead against Dark Law. And so he realized that instead of trying to attack over the Dark Law, he should have just unicorned me, which, yeah, would have been a much better play. And I wouldn't have had much follow up besides the Mally Bane that was off inside of there. So I do feel like, I don't know, it ended up working out in my favor that I didn't go into DPE, but DPE probably still would have been the better play, maybe. I don't know. So if I thought about it a little bit harder, I guess Dark Law did turn out to be the better play, which is good. And now we're siding going into game, going into game two. And going into the next game, I decide to side out some of the cards, like the Lightning Storms that I have mained. I go ahead and side those out because... I feel like the being able to add in like gamma and stuff is better just to stop his play, stop him from even like setting sight and getting that far with the little combo and everything. So while deciding what to side in and side out, I go ahead and decide that like most of the hand traps and other cards that I have inside of my deck aren't really all that effective against live twins. My main deck is pretty much, you know, a pretty good counter to it so the only thing i started in were the gammas and drivers in which i took out the two lightning storms because i didn't want a lightning storm you know a scythe hitting his back row or anything and his monsters i didn't feel like were really doing too much to where i just needed to lightning storm them and i also sided out one cross out designator and one mass change to be able to fit the extra hand traps off in there to guarantee to kind of more of a guarantee that I open up with two of them 
in my opening hand. And then one thing I'm realizing when I'm side decking also is that my opponent is probably side in Droll and Lockbird. And so I decided to switch out one of the Ghost Ogres for Droll and Lockbird. That way I can cross it out if that comes out. Like I just forget sometimes that I need to add in those side decked um, cross out targets. So I'm all ready to go. He's about to be ready to go. I'm just waiting to see what my opening hand is and everything. Hoping that I can get another 2-0 victory in here. And since he is a Scythe Lock deck, you know, it's funny because it never crossed my mind that he would try to make me go first. But in this game, he actually, I guess he sided in a bunch of going second cards and it just never crossed my mind that he might make me go first and this game ended up being just like kind of crazy yeah, you see he does a little side deck dice roll thing there <laughs> he's gonna let fate determine his other side deck end card so yeah this game ended up being kind of crazy because it felt like he opened up like all the counters to me and he kind of took advantage of me going a uh, being a going second deck. Now the thing about being a playing heroes going second is that the way that we play usually still means that if our opponent does make us go first, they still have to worry about dark law because we're going to get dark law out to the board. And I need to do a better job about showing my opening hand and stuff. So my opening hand does consist of ogre, nib, ash. A hero lives and mass change. So my only starter is a hero lives, and if I get hit with Ash there, you know it might be might be pretty bad. But he doesn't have anything for hero lives, doesn't have anything for Stratos, so I'm able to go add my Vion, and I have three hand traps in hand. So it's a really really good draw. I have mass change, and he goes ahead and tries to Ghost Ogre my Vion. And I, like I said, I have the mass change. I send Mally because I don't need to send Shadow Mist at this point. I want to go ahead and make DPE Dark Law. So Dark Law comes out to the board. Go ahead and banish Mally Boy, the special summon Mally Boy. And this is going to put me at like 2,000 life points. But I really don't mind since, like I said, I have three hand traps in hand and I don't feel like um, that I'm losing this game. Because even if he does bring out like something big enough to be able to just like game over me, then, you know, I do still have DPE and I still have Nib in case things go wrong. So I'm bring out Verte, Verte F to bring out DPE and I have the board that I want, DPE. Dark Law, I have follow up with Denier and Mally Boy in the grave, and I'm just kind of ready for everything at this point. Let me see. DPE hit the board. And I'm trying to decide if with 2,000 life points, should I go ahead and pop DPE in my Verte so that he's not there on the board? But the thing about doing that is, is that it is game two and I feel like Ghost Bell is really, really effective against heroes because of Cross Crusader, because of DPE. So I decide not to do it instead. That way I can also try to keep DPE out on the board for the attack decrease for if he tried to attack over Dark Law. But as you can see, my opponent opened up the perfect Starting going second hand, he's got the lightning storm for Verte and Dark Law. He's got the hanky panky for my DPE. There goes panky effect, and then I'm gonna activate DPE's effect, and he has called by also. So, yeah, all three of those cards super effective. <laughs> But the thing about it is, like, I was like, okay, if he's got all that, there is no way that he has an extender also. So I go ahead and just decide to ash his little live twin monster. And I still do have the two other hand traps in my hand, just in case he does happen to have the extender, which he didn't happen to have. Like, if he had the extender, too, that would just be just be crazy. Call by 
Lightning Storm, Panky, and a starter. Yeah. And a Ghost Ogre, because he had Ghost Ogre also. So if I hadn't had Mass Change, that would have been kind of a bad situation, maybe. So he doesn't have the extender. My turn, I go ahead, activate Denier's effect to special summon himself from Grave. Activate his effect to put Mally Boy. Uh, I'm actually kind of thinking because of what's inside of my hand. But I go ahead and decide to put Mally Boy back on top. And right there, there was a long break in between the plays because I had to get up and go take care of a few things. But as play resumes, I sit down, I look at the board, look at his hand. He's only got one card in hand. I really worried about hand traps at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and go for the OTK. So I'm going to use Cross Crusader to go ahead to get to my Vion, Vion to get into Sunrise. That way he knows that his life points are ending. Just kind of going through the motions right now because I have the perfect hand to OTK him. And for some strange reason for turn, I ended up drawing the polymerization. So, yeah, not that that really makes too much of a difference. We go ahead and bring out Cross Crusader, bring back Mally, Tribute to add Vion, which in this case, I probably could have added Stratos. Also, it wouldn't have mattered. Either one of them would do the same thing since I drew the polymerization anyway. I'm going to send Shadow Mist. Add Graceful Charity. Don't tell anybody that I'll be searching for Graceful Charity. And we're going to poly Graceful Charity and Vion together to bring out Sunrise. Sunrise effect to add Miracle Fusion. Then I'm going to shuffle it up so that I can draw two, discard one. Go ahead and drop the ghost ogre because it's no longer needed and i wish that i could draw two and discard in another one when i <laughs> activate miracle fusion to bring out ab zero but yeah that would just be too too good so ab zero hits the board i'm going to proceed to battle phase i can declare an attack with cross crusader and activate sunrise's effect to pop her then Declare my attack with Cross Crusader, attack with Sunrise, attack with Ab Zero, Mass Change into Anki, and yep, it's enough to do all the damage. Lethal, and that'll be the end of game two right there. I feel like for the most part, the deck performed pretty well, so I will try this out on Friday, see how it goes. Appreciate y'all for watching. Like and subscribe.